الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله النبي الكريم وعلى آله وأصحابه وأزواجه وأهل بيته أجمعين قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في القرآن المجيد بعد عوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما <تصفيق> اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما تحب وترضى بأن تصلى عليه وقال الله سبحانه وتعالى ألم تر كيف ضرب الله مثلا كلمة طيبة كشجرة طيبة أصلها ثابت وفرعها في السماء تؤتي أكلها كل حين بإذن ربها ويضرب الله الأمثال للناس لعلهم يتذكرون ومثل كلمة خبيثة كشجرة خبيثة نجتثت من فوق الأرض ما لها من قرار صدق الله العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك لمن الشاهدين وشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين Respected علماء, respected حفاظ قراء My respected elders, brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Indeed all praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send his choice his blessings on Nabi Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And inshallah, on this occasion of the 40th anniversary of Imasa, inshallah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase them in barakah. And we are also appreciative to participate with them uh, in their next journey, inshallah. Uh, Dr. Irshad said that we must keep to the sunnah of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this morning I joked with you guys and I said that I'm going to be on stage for 45 minutes. And I was on stage and I was calling a doctor. She's not a doctor, I didn't know. So I'll say Auntie Yasira was handing me cards and saying time is up. And so we tried to keep to 45 minutes. So inshallah I'll try to keep to the sunnah uh, tonight. <laughs> the theme of the conference has been uh, 40 and in forward. And in this morning session, we spoke about Ashuddha, the concept of that psychological maturity that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala references in the verse about the age of 40. And tonight, inshallah, I'll try and get into the forward-looking part of it. And when I saw the agenda during the course of the day and for tomorrow as well, it's filled with technological advancements and decentralization and blockchain and the future of medical technology, the fourth industrial revolution and web 3.0 and blah, 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 blah. I thought about what I wanna say in respect of this and I decided that I'm going to recycle one of the speeches that I was asked to give a few months ago where somebody asked me to cover a macroeconomic view of certain things because I think it's appropriate for what the topics and themes are for the conference and in line with the theme of 40 and forward. And this theme about Web 3.0 and decentralization, if you take it as a basic idea, the basic idea is that you are decentralizing something in Web 2.0 or the place that we are currently existing in, you see that there has been the centralization of power into big data companies. And it's interesting to see where this idea of decentralization or the democratization of everything comes from. Because historically, human beings have never operated in circular or horizontal structures. We've always operated in vertical or hierarchical structures. This concept of what is now becoming known as a DAO, a decentralized autonomous organization, has never existed. It's the first time that human beings are ever being presented with this concept of a DAO, a decentralized autonomous organization. So we'll present two independent ideas and it'll converge in my conclusion Inshallah is the main message. To start, the first idea is, when we think about economics, you see two predominant economic systems in the world. On the one extreme, we know capitalism as the predominant system in the world. 
and we see socialism or communism as the other extreme in the world. And economics being a social science deals with the behaviors of human beings. So how do human beings engage with the economic aspects of their life? And so Professor Fazlur Rahman Ansari, Rahmatullah he put this idea quite succinctly, where he said that every human system is rooted in some form of value. So capitalism is rooted in the value of freedom, where the belief is that the human being has absolute freedom. And so you see it manifest itself in the laissez-faire approach to markets, where Adam Smith said, no, the market ought to correct itself on its own with the hidden hand of the market. And so in what was regarded as a knee-jerk reaction to this, Karl Marx with communism or Marxism or, or whatever the words are in respect of this, said, no, there must be a different value because human beings cannot have absolute freedom. You must have absolute equality. And so socialism or communism is rooted in the value of absolute equality, where human beings are entitled to nothing but a wage for their labor. And historically, this dichotomy has existed since the dawn of recorded economic history. And it's never been reconciled. And the reason, in my opinion, why this dichotomy has never been reconciled is because both of these systems put forward the notion that wealth is something that can be owned by anyone. Capitalism suggests that wealth is to be owned by human beings. Socialism says no, wealth is to be owned by the state. Versus the concept of Islam, where we own nothing. And give from them from give to them from the wealth of Allah. It is Allah's wealth. And so the dichotomy will never be remediated because the idea is rooted in flawed logic that you can own, you can't own. It's owned by God Almighty. So that's the first idea. The second idea that stemming from this is that by virtue of the systems believing that you can own or you can effect absolute control over something, the emergence of Web 2.0 manifested, where they effected control over human beings. So it's not a secret, right? All of us in the room, our entire identities are owned by either one of five tech companies, if not all of them. Meta, Google, Amazon, Microsoft, Apple. They own all of our identities. So now comes the convergence of these two ideas into this concept of decentralization. And we've underestimated the impact that the 2008 financial crisis has had on the world. We often think linearly and try to correlate events in a linear fashion. But society doesn't evolve its ideologies linearly. It's a dynamic thing. It, you need to draw correlations and point it into another direction to actually reconcile why society is manifesting itself the way it does. So if you start off with the 2008 financial crisis as the catalyst of this idea of decentralization, what you see is it showcased itself as the negative effects of what greed does. This is what the 2008 financial crisis was. It showcased manifestly what greed is. And on the other extreme, you saw that socialism was still manifesting or concentrating wealth into the hands of the few, where it was the oligarchs or the state that were having all of the wealth in their hand. So human beings then decided to revolt. I've got five minutes now, Dr. Khan told me. <laughs> And you then had the Arab Spring. So after the 2008 crash, the next major global event that we had 
was the Arab Spring. And what you saw in the Arab Spring was human beings saying, we're tired of being governed by either system. We don't want capitalism, neither do we want socialism. Both are vertical in nature. Both are asymmetrical in information distribution. And so does emerge blockchain with its decentralization of information and its decentralization of everything where it says there must be circularity in the societal structures. And so you then had the freedom of access to information and the breaking down of the asymmetry of information and everything became visible to everyone, which gave rise to where we are now, which is Web 2.0, where the platforms control everything and we consume everything from three or four major platform companies, which now has poppy implications. Like we don't even own our own identity. So what's happening is Web 3.0 is now saying, we need to claim back our own identities. Can we please get ourselves back? And through all of this, what you actually see happening is human beings wandering, trying to find the natural fitra again. You cannot find adal. You cannot find balance. You cannot find justice. Everything is disweighted or in disproportionality to each other. And so you start asking the question to the global citizen, why are you in disproportionality? Why are you not in balance? So the example, I'll go a little longer than five minutes, right? Please. <laughs> the best sort of similitudes we have is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides. And in this example, inshallah, I'll use is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Alam tara kayfa darab Allah mathalan kalimatan tayyibah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts forward to you the example of the similitude of a good tree or a good idea, or a good thing, which is the same as a good word. So Allah is giving us the similitude of a tree and a good idea. A good idea, a good word, a good thing is like a good tree. Asluha thabit wa far'uha fis sama. Its roots are affixed firmly into the ground and its branches soar into the sky. And it continuously bears fruit because of the nourishment that it's deriving from the ground. So the first reminder we have is that the world is trying to push us into this idea of absolute autonomy, pushing us to grow our own branches, perceptually that you can break free from the systems of the past. And it's a very important idea, this perception that is being created, that you can break free from systems of the past. But Allah then says, وَمَثَلُ كَلِمَةٍ خَبِيثَةٍ But if you take a bad idea or a bad word, كَشَجَرَةٍ خَبِيثَةٍ اجْتُثَّتْ مِنْ فَوْقِ الْأَرْضِ it is like a tree whose roots are on top of the ground, drawing no nourishment. Malaham in qara, and it will die. So my message for this evening is on this idea of moving forward, on this idea of the decentralization, of becoming autonomous with absolute autonomy. For us as Muslims, it doesn't mean living in disconnectedness with the roots through which we derive our nourishment, which is the Quran and Sunnah. And unfortunately, this has been understood, I'm concluding, I'm concluding, inshallah. This has been understood as the negation of our agency. We believe that by us not breaking free, from the systems of the past is that we are removing our agency that we have of choosing. But in fact, it's proof of our agency, which Allah proves. That you can choose to break free, 
but then you will be kashajaratin khabita. You will be like that tree that draws no nourishment. Or you choose to be kashajaratin tayyiba, a tree that is still firmly affixed to its roots that draws the nourishment that we need from the Quran and the Sunnah, inshallah. So we make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah makes us ashjarun tayyiba, inshallah, trees of goodness, Drawing constant nourishment, inshallah. Jazakallah khair. Salam wa rahmatullah.